Because for the first few layers, it's just dirt. And you're like, all right, here we go. We're still going. And then you find something. It's just like, oh. The cemetery was originally obtained or opened by the county, uh, I believe, in 1910. So for over a hundred years now, the county's had access to this five-acre piece of land here in San Bernardino. The county has used it almost exclusively for two primary purposes, for the burial of uh, indigent uh, decedents and uh, previously for the, the burial of uh, skeletonized remains of people who were not identified. And our need goes back to the 1990s when the legislature mandated that uh, all coroner divisions extract DNA from unknown persons, unknown decedents. And uh, to me, it just seemed a natural partnership that IFR students would come and, and supply the labor and, and they would gain uh, in their knowledge. And, and we, on the other hand, would gain in our ability to comply with the law. And, and more importantly than that, uh, hopefully, we get to answer some questions to families who have been missing loved ones for a long, long time. We get to put names to those uh, unfortunate people who have been buried without an identity, so to speak. Uh, it's a very rare program uh, that we were trying to get off the ground. Um, very few opportunities for students. Uh, forensic anthropology and forensic archaeology are important fields and training those students the right way under controlled condition is a good thing for the field in general. With the world in its current state of affairs, um, often during times of crisis we see an uptick in the number of people who are disappeared or genocides occur quietly and the more people who are trained in uh, proper recovery techniques of individuals means that we have a chance even just as individuals to make a difference in the world, to make a difference for the people who have lost their voice. So being able to help the world on a larger scale is important. Yesterday we discovered our coffin lid. It had actually caved in like almost six inches. So now we're working on getting the rest of the lid up and exposing the body. So we've got a little bit of bone exposed and we're working on getting that last bit. But we dug so deep in that middle spot. You know what? Actually, you're the archaeologist at the moment, right? What can you tell me? Yeah, it's really interesting. The forensic context means you're going to connect a victim to a suspect, to an object like a murder weapon, to an event. As it's like that's the circle. The event is usually death, and um, so you get this circle, and you're always going after this circle. In this case, if you're trying to connect a homicide, we still could. You can work with skeletons in the classroom, but when you're actually exhuming somebody, that's a completely different experience. And I needed that to know that this was something that I wanted to do with my future. Um, and I still do. The thing I was worried about with excavation is definitely the physical labor. And what you come to realize is that eventually your body will acclimate and you actually get faster. And then, I mean, you still ache every day after working for so long, but then eventually you get used to it. I think I'm learning that I'm able to actually handle physical labor as well as the intellectual side of looking at bones much better than I thought I could. I want to go to graduate school, so I'm going to be applying in a couple months and this field school would look perfect on any application to anywhere. So I'd hope to take all of this knowledge with me further on down the line and hopefully build a career off of it. That would be great. Uh, I told them of how important it was to us to have individuals who are trained in this type of specialty, to those that are able to work in the field, those that could come out and be an immediate assistant to us in a disaster scenario, as well as in my day job with the corner industry, to have someone that can come out and have that forensic science background to be able to do these types of extrication from the ground and scientifically do that to participate with our homicide teams. I have no archaeology experience, well I had no archaeology experience. Um, so although my forensic anthropology experience might have been more advanced than some of the other students, I learned a lot from them, so it was a give and take relationship. It forces you to work together because no one has been able to do it on their own. Some people are like master students, so they know the osteology very, very well. But 
other people, they haven't had osteology, but they've had cultural anthropology, they have archaeology, they've been in the field before. Everyone helped each other out, so. I, I would absolutely do it again. Um, you definitely, you definitely get out what you put into it. Um, and I think we've all been realizing it, it's been only four weeks, but it feels like we've been here forever. We've been working very hard, but it's been absolutely worth it. And we're learning so much and, and doing so much work out here. Um, it's been a very, very positive experience. This has been a major bonding experience for all of us. I feel like, especially for the people who stay in this field, we will be friends for the rest of our lives. Because this, like, in a way, not to sound corny, has been life-changing. I'm so excited about it, I can't wait for next year. <laughs>